Hi, I'm Rich Madel, and for today's tech tip, I'm going to show you how to play the Mata Moscas game. You know, that fly swatter game. Whether you're hybrid, whether you're virtual, whether you have your students all in your classroom, we can all play this. What is Mata Moscas? Great question. So Mata Moscas is a competitive vocabulary recognition activity. Now, this is a relatively low cognitive task. However, it is a great activity in the beginning of your unit when you're introducing new vocabulary, where you just want to provide students extra exposure to the words and expressions that you're working with uh, in your class. This is an activity that will get all of your students engaged. It's not just going to be one person working and a bunch of people observing. Everybody is going to be engaged in this activity. This is an ideal activity for groups of two to three to four students. Now, you might recognize this from way back in the day in overhead projectors. We used to project expressions on the board. We'd give two students literal fly swatters. You'd call out an expression, and the first person to smack the expression on the board wins. Well, that was then, and this is now. And now we can play a virtual Mata Moscas using Google Slides. So I want to show you how we set ourselves up. And now this may look complicated, but I promise you it's not, and it's totally worth it. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to make enough copies of the Mata Moscas template for the amount of groups that you're going to have. So if you have 24 students and you want them to work in pairs, you're going to make 12 different copies of the Mata Moscas slide. If you have 24 students and you want them to work in groups of four, well, then you're going to make six copies of that slide. At that point, you've made your copies. You want to create an editable link to the Mata Moscas Google Slide document. You don't want them to join as viewers. You want them to join as collaborators. Now we can start our class. You can divide your students into different groups, and you will direct them to go to a specific slide number. So you can say students one and two, you guys go to slide one. You can go students C and D, go to slide two. And that way, they'll all be housed in the same document, but you'll see them in individual slides playing with each other. Once they're, they go to the slide that you direct them to, you want to have them establish their names on the box that are around the perimeter. That's what they're going to use to drag the expressions that you call into the box. Now, there's two different ways that you could play it, I should say. One way, the teacher leads it. And that is once the students have established their box, the teacher then calls the expressions and the students listen and respond to that. The other way is to have the students lead the game. And so that's a little bit different. You might want to do that in breakout groups. But basically, you set it up exactly the same way, except once they're in their groups, you make sure that they establish a rotation. And if you notice, you will notice in a second that the boxes, uh, they're labeled Estudiante 1, 2, 3, 4. And so you could just have them say, listen, if you're a Estudiante 1, you call first. Estudiante 2 calls second, et cetera, et cetera. I also make sure that they know that the person who calls is also in charge of confirming that the correct expression by their peers was dragged into the box. So what does this look like? Let's take a look at, at, uh, at, a, at a copy of, of this together. So this right here is a copy of the Mata Moscas template. And so you can see these expressions right here, these are just simple text boxes. We have some fly images as distractors here. And so the first thing, as I said, that they would do is they would put their names in here. We could have students A, B, C, etc. So I don't want to get ahead of myself. The first thing that we should be doing is we should be making copies of our slide. And we can do it just by duplicating the slide. And now I have it set up for four different groups. At that point, I want to share an editable link to my students. And if I click the share button up here, I will get a I will get a link created. Now I want to make sure that they get editing rights. So if it's set as viewer, they're not going to be able to interact with it. If it's set as editor, they can interact with it there. So this is the link that I will copy and I will share with them. However, I, I communicate with my students, whether it's through my LMS or whether it's through the chat feature, it doesn't matter. 
And so now I'm going to divide my students, and I can do this in the classroom. And I divide them, and I can tell them, okay, students A, B, and C, you go to slide one. Uh, maybe students B, E, and F, you go to slide two. Right, so they'll go to a slide, they'll establish their box, and at this point, we call out the expressions. And the key is to be able to be the first one to click on the expression and drag it into the box. So if I were to call out, uh, good afternoon, we're looking for the first student to click and to drag into their box. The student with the most expressions by the time all of the expressions are called is the winner. Now, I do have a little, some, some tips and some tricks here that you may find useful. The first is I actually create two different versions for my groups to use. The first has the expressions in Spanish. That's what I just showed you. And I call the expressions in English, or the students call the expressions in English. The second, I have the same thing, except the expressions are in English, and they, uh, whoever's calling will call them in Spanish. This is actually a really good trick to get your novices to just start producing and, and calling and speaking their, their target language in a really low stress environment. It's a great way for them to figure out if their pronunciation, if their pronunciation is comprehensible or not. The second, the second tip and trick here is that I make additional copies of, uh, of the document so that I can restructure the groups after we've all played and we can do it all over again. The fact that we have new partners adds a brand new level of competitive edge and we can kind of milk the same, the same activity just a little bit longer. And the last one is this, those fly images, the closer you put them to the word, the more of a distractor they create, the more that they get in the way when the students try to click really quickly. So it's just an, an, an extra level that makes it a little bit more fun. Now, you can access this Matamoscas template. You can have it. If you go to tinyurl.com slash guatfulmatamoscas, it's yours. Make a copy of it so that it goes into your Google Drive, and then you can follow the instructions that I shared with you. Thanks. Enjoy.